Tonight on Oregon Art Beat, beat some musicians on a mission. The Oregon Symphony's bassoon brothers use a sense of humor to gain attention for this often misunderstood instrument. We'll get in on the fun. Do you know what a bassoon looks like? Or even how it sounds? Well, if not, you're in good company. Bassoon players sometimes call it the Rodney Dangerfield of instruments because it doesn't get much respect. But a small group of musicians is out to change all of that. They hope to shift the image of the bassoon from the clown prince to the crown prince of the orchestra, all by poking fun at its image. Melissa Mills chronicles the unlikely rise of the Oregon Symphony's bassoon brothers. <laughs> This is a quartet of bassoon believers, classical musicians so devoted to this instrument that they have worked and played together for 16 years. Yet all confess it's been an unlikely love affair. If there is anybody who started out to play the bassoon, I don't know who that is. Nobody else played it in school. and I'd never seen one before. It's the Rodney Dangerfield instrument. Bassoon players don't tend to get too much respect. And my parents said, you're going to play the bassoon. I, I had to look it up in the encyclopedia. I was unhappy. But if it wasn't love at first sight, it was love at first sound. <laughs> there was a guy sitting next to me with this bright red bassoon, and out of my left ear all the time I was hearing this wonderful sound. Around the same time, the Alfred Hitchcock uh, television show had their theme played by a bassoon ensemble. And I heard that, and the combination of those two things made me want to play the bassoon. To musicians and composers, the curious looking instrument is by turns comical and captivating. So if you have something like the Sorcerer's Apprentice, and you think about Mickey Mouse and the, and the brooms and all of that, you'll get this one. <laughs> That, right. that goes on. Uh, and then you take something like um, Tchaikovsky's Sixth Symphony, which starts with a bassoon solo. Of course, all the great pieces start with a bassoon solo, don't you know? And it's very low and somber and soft and sounds something like this. Composers from Tchaikovsky to Mozart have turned to the bassoon for both its humor and its haunting quality. Listen closely to any symphony orchestra and you'll hear one or two bassoons at work. They're most often in the bass line of an arrangement, just under the smaller woodwinds. Yet despite its devoted fans and distinguished musical history, the bassoon suffers from an identity crisis. He plays the oboe, they'll say. You'll say bassoon, and then later when you're introduced by that same person who you told what you're playing, they'll usually say, he plays the oboe. The quartet decided it was time for gentility to give way to a little guerrilla marketing. Meet the Bassoon Brothers and their soul as in only sister. They're wanted for low down playing and bass behavior. Quartet members are not only shaking up their image, they're showing up in places bassoons have probably never been. And our mission, which is to find a bassoon in as many homes in America as we can. They play music in jails and nursing homes, community centers, and concert halls. And at each stop, they have a little fun with what remains an essentially classic repertoire. This is a very serious piece. It actually comes uh, about 300 years ago. This is called Concerto La Phoenix. And we're not poking fun at classical music necessarily, but we're having fun with classical music. Still, it's not your average classical concert, and that, of course, is the whole point. <laughs> By the time the group arrives at the blues classic Night Train, the audience is having as much fun as the quartet. In this case, a trombone slide attached to a bassoon becomes an entirely new kind of instrument, the trombone. 
I really enjoyed that, really enjoyed showing what the bassoon can do to people who many of them had never even seen one before. And they come up to us afterwards and they said, you know, I came here not expecting to enjoy myself, but I really did because you guys are having fun. They were funny. I like their hats. They should come more often. They should give us lessons. In the end, the Bassoon Brothers hope to offer enjoyment and perhaps even a little inspiration. We hope that uh, in, the, in the future that in the middle schools in Portland uh, and certainly in the high schools that there will be at least two bassoon players in every band. At the very least, the players hope next time audiences see a bassoon, they'll not only recognize it but recall the instrument's influence and that whether listeners prefer the art of Mozart or the beat of the blues, they'll remember it's the oon and bassoon that helps make the most of the music. The bassoon was once so popular that Vivaldi wrote 37 concertos for it, but only the bassoon brothers would attempt a bassoon-only version of Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze. Catch the Bassoon Brothers next fall in a special concert with the symphony. And Mark is playing with the Chamber Music Northwest this summer.